We just didn't know how. That's the words of one NASA worker from Houston today as they consider what happened as the Space Shuttle Columbia came in on what seemed like the, the flawless conclusion to a nearly flawless mission. Let's continue our coverage as we turn our attention now to Washington and to Florida on a story that really spans the entire country. Lou Dobbs at the Kennedy Space Center, but first Judy Woodruff in Washington. Judy? That's right. Thank you, Miles. And it has been a full day and a very difficult day for President George W. Bush, who, as we know, until uh, just lately, has, his main focus has been pressing the U.S. case against Iraq. Well, today, the president has talked by telephone with the families of the lost astronauts. He has spoken words of consolation to the rest of the country, to all of us. CNN's White House correspondent, Suzanne Malveaux, has been at the White House all this day following development. Suzanne. Well, Judy, tonight leaders around the world are offering their condolences to the White House as President Bush marks this tragic day with reflection, mourning, and prayer. In honor of those lost, the flag at the White House lowered at half down. President Bush once again charged testing, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, four, five. The nation together in time of tragedy. My fellow testing, Americans, you want it up higher? This day has brought terrible news. And great sadness to our country. Testing one, two, three, four, five. At nine o'clock this morning, Mission Control in Houston lost contact with our space shuttle Columbia. A short time later, debris was seen falling from the skies above Texas. The Columbia is lost. There are no survivors. Six Americans and one Israeli lost. People the president said assumed great risk in the service to all humanity. The cause in which they died will continue. Mankind is led into the darkness beyond our world by the inspiration of discovery and the longing to understand. Our journey into space will go on. Just after 9 o'clock this morning at Camp David, President Bush is notified by his chief of staff that NASA has lost contact with the shuttle. At 10.30, he's briefed by NASA's director and decides to return to the White House early. The Situation Room at the White House goes into full gear, notifying all the principals. By 12.30, the president is back in the Oval Office when NASA's director tells him there are no survivors. Fifteen minutes later, Mr. Bush, standing at his desk, holds a conference call with the victims' families who are gathered around a speakerphone at the Kennedy Space Center. He tells them, we express our love and appreciation for all those who died today. I want the loved ones to know there are millions of Americans praying for you, including me and Laura. It's an incredibly tough day for you. May God bless you all. I wish I was there to hug, cry, and comfort you right now. In a poignant moment, a White House aide who was with the president says after the call, a somber Mr. Bush briefly excused himself to the executive residence. The president also called Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon to offer his condolences for the Israeli astronaut lost. And the president received calls from world leaders from Mexico, Canada, and even those recently at odds with the president over his stand with Iraq, France, and Russia. And Judy, today was a big day for the Department of Homeland Security. Its new secretary, Governor Tom Ridge, able to quickly assess and gather information, assign FEMA the lead role in recovery, and also to reassure the American people that as tragic as this disaster was, it was not the result of terrorism. Judy. All right. Thank you, Suzanne. At the same time, they are saying they are pressing ahead with the case against Iraq. That will continue. Well, as you've been hearing from my colleague Miles O'Brien, NASA's engineers are already hard at work trying to solve the mystery of what happened to the shuttle Columbia. But a number of other federal agencies are also involved in the investigation. And for that part of the story, we're going to bring in our Patty Davis. Patty. Well, Judy, FEMA is heading the response and recovery effort. Other agencies are heading south to take part in the investigation. The debris strewn across several states is crucial to finding what caused the accident. We are going to gather every piece we can find, treat this much like an aircraft incident, and see if we can solve the puzzle. Finding the pieces is a massive undertaking, but an essential one. If the cause is structural, debris could provide the key clues. They can then piece that together uh, 
to figure out uh, how it came apart, and then that'll help them figure out where the cause was. That's why officials are appealing to the public to turn over any pictures people took of the shuttle falling and to turn in any pieces found. If you find debris, Please call local authorities immediately to tell them of the location. The Federal Emergency Management Agency is coordinating the federal government's response and recovery. The military guarding and searching for debris using planes, boats, and helicopters. The FAA instituting a 40-mile-wide, 160-mile-long restricted zone below 3,000 feet from Texas to Louisiana to protect aircraft involved in the recovery. The National Transportation Safety Board sending vehicle structure and system experts to help. NTSB crash investigators helped piece together debris from the in-flight breakup of the TWA 800 crash. This debris field as much as 100 times bigger. This is going to be an extraordinarily challenging uh, investigation. Uh, the, uh, the vehicle was at 200,000 feet. It was traveling at 12,500 miles per hour. There simply has never been uh, a breakup uh, like, like this in uh, aviation or space history. In addition to debris, NASA says the shuttle had data and voice recorders, but more importantly, it was constantly streaming information to mission control. We are preserving hardware around the country in our different facilities. We are impounding data here that represented the last data that we received from the crew. And we'll, we will be pouring over that data 24 hours a day. Besides NASA's own investigation, an independent group, including the military, the FAA, will also look into what happened, an investigation that could take months, if not years. Judy. All right, Patty Davis, thanks very much. When you think about it, uh, Miles, it seems almost a miracle that any pieces uh, survived from that altitude and at that speed. Judy, what I've seen is there aren't many very big pieces, that is for sure. Uh, just 12 hours ago, hundreds of people were gathering at the Kennedy Space Center to see the shuttle landing. Their excitement quickly turned to shock. CNN's Lou Dobbs is at Kennedy. Lou? Miles, as you say, shock, and the shock is still being felt profoundly here by everyone who works at NASA and who works with NASA. The, the NASA Administrator, Sean O'Keefe, uh, has uh, spent much of the day comforting uh, the uh, families of the seven astronauts who, uh, who lost their lives today aboard Columbia. He has also spent much of his time uh, learning as much as possible about what the NASA engineers, managers, and investigators know to this point. And he has been briefing congressional uh, leaders, and amongst them uh, House Majority Leader Tom DeLay and Congressman Dave Weldon.